Hi there, I was just gonna create a quick video just to talk about where I'm at with machine learning, learning. I did a couple of videos, basically, I was learning fast AI from this book and going through it and just where I was getting to. I kind of got to a point with this where I kind of paused on this because as I mentioned in the previous video, I was doing Andrew Ng's Stanford University course. And so I got through that, that was um, like 11 week course. You can usually do each week in roughly one day and that was a great course it really got into the fundamentals and the math behind machine learning fast ai kind of takes the the idea that you start very high level and then you kind of work down i never got to that working down point because i kind of enjoyed the machine learning course on coursera getting really into the math and the low level fundamentals and so that took me yeah, a few weeks to, to get through. But as I mentioned, it's from August 2011. A lot has happened in machine learning since then. So one thing that does cover is vectorization, but it never really mentions anything about GPUs. There's no mention of Python. So all machine learning now is pretty much done in Python. It's either TensorFlow or PyTorch. Uh, on that course, it uses MATLAB and or Octave. And so I did the MATLAB course, learn about MATLAB, use the environment. It's kind of like an, an online programming environment, which was pretty good. I like the interface. It worked well until the very end, just as I was completing the course, I couldn't get MATLAB to work. And it was because I'd flooded the flooded my file with a lot of text output and MATLAB just wouldn't open that and then I had to revert that file uh, to actually get it to work. So that was pretty frustrating end to that. But otherwise MATLAB was good, but I don't really see me ever using MATLAB again. But as I mentioned, it, the core fundamentals are really good in this course and I recommend you learn a bit of, a bit of math before you start this course, particularly around derivatives, things like the chain rule. Um, because as I was going through the course, I thought it was really good to be able to follow along with the math and then try and understand and pause the video sometimes and try and guess where the math was going, like where the derivatives were going, or maybe when Andrew Ng uh, said, you know, the math behind this is quite complicated, it uses the chain rule, etc. Um, and then actually trying to work out what the math was or how to derive some of the functions there's a newer course, so the machine learning course by Andrew Ng, which is in affiliation with Stanford University, that's from August 2011, so it's just turned 2021, so by the time we get to August this year, it's going to be 10 years old. But there's a newer course, which is August 2017, so it's like six years later, it's by Andrew Ng again. But this is in affiliation with uh, deeplearning.ai. It's called Deep Learning Specialization. There's five courses, but they're all shorter. In total, it adds up to uh, 16 weeks. So it is actually a little bit longer than the previous one. It's more modern. It talks about newer concepts, things have changed. Um, and Andrew Ng actually does mention a few things like, this is how it used to be done. We don't do that anymore. And I think that is in reference to the older course. So it is interesting to see how things have changed over, over the six years. And some people might regret doing the older course if they get to the newer course and realize that, oh, that was a little bit outdated. But I actually found it was useful. I, if I had to do it again, I would do the older course first again and then the newer course. But obviously that depends on how much time you've got. If you have less time, it might be better to just jump into the newer course. It's more designed for getting you up to speed, building neural networks, doing projects. The latter three courses are on, there's one on projects, actually making projects to get stuck in. And then convolutional neural networks. So that's around like image detection, image recognition. And then another one at the end is sequence models. So that's around like language models. I'm just on the last one right now, the um, sequence models. So I've almost finished that. And both really great courses. Yeah, getting back to the fast day. Fast AI, um, I haven't really got back into this one. When I jumped back into this one, I started finding that I wasn't getting as much out of it as I thought I was before. And one problem I had was it's hard to tell where PyTorch ends and where Fast AI starts because Fast AI is a level of abstraction on top of PyTorch. And obviously PyTorch is a level of abstraction on the lower level stuff. Um, and having gone from the lower level stuff to fast AI, there's kind of this gap in the middle of PyTorch where I'm like, oh, what is it that PyTorch is doing and what is it that fast AI is doing? I actually um, 
I bought this book a long time ago and I, I realized it was on my shelf, so I started reading this one. This is Deep Learning with PyTorch. So I'm trying to learn a bit more on PyTorch. I think once I, I understand PyTorch and the boundaries of what PyTorch is, I'll go back to Fast.ai and learn what that kind of adds to it. That's kind of where I'm at. I'm also doing some, some YouTube, watching a lot of YouTube. Um, Andrew Carpathy, I've been watching a lot of videos from him. He did a machine learning course, which is pretty similar to the Coursera course, uh, but it's at Stanford University. It's the actual Stanford University course. So I'm listening to that in the car when I'm driving. Uh, so I'm kind of visualizing what he's talking about on the screen. Sometimes he has slightly different perspectives of the way he interprets some of the things in machine learning. And I think that's good because a lot of machine learning is trying to get intuition. And so that's why I wanted to go really deep as I could and understand the mathematics because pretty much when you build a machine learning model, it's, it's kind of a black box. And when things start going wrong, um, you really want to have as much intuition, as much like of that muscle built up so you can kind of figure out where to take it. So one of the things I did actually was um, I implemented from scratch, basically pure Python, no dependencies, no NumPy, no pandas, no PyTorch or TensorFlow, just pure Python implemented a neural network for the MNIST character recognition data set. It's like 60,000 handwritten characters that you train on and then 10,000 to test it on. Um, and I, I got pretty good like in the 90s accuracy on that. And I actually built that up from like lists of lists of floats and implemented matrix multiplication, ReLU and derivatives and forward propagation, back propagation and also gradient checking. So it's kind of interesting to do that because I built the model from scratch and then it kind of works, but then it doesn't really work that well. And you have to kind of figure out why, why is this kind of training up to a point and then kind of falling off? Is the training not working or do I have a bug in the code or am I doing something fundamentally wrong or am I training it for enough iterations? Is the network size wrong? So it's always good to have reference models where you can look on the internet. What have other people done? What kind of architecture of their model have they had? See what accuracy they got try and replicate that. So that was definitely a good exercise in debugging neural networks and code. That's on GitHub if you want to take a look. I think implementing this kind of thing at a very low level is really good to make sure that you understand all the low level things. It definitely uncovered a few things where I was pretty sure I knew it, but then when I went to actually write it out in code, it made me have to think again and look back at my notes. So that's where I'm at. I'm gonna finish the Coursera course on sequence models pretty soon, I hope. Get a bit deeper into PyTorch and hopefully get back to fast AI. And I also wanna start building more models and doing more Kaggle. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.